to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. Of angels, it is said in the Bible, who makes his angel spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. Psalm 104, verse number four. We welcome you today to our study of the special subject of angels. What do we know about angels? Are angels running around today? Are angels still active in God's plan today as they were in the New Testament? And more importantly, what does the New Testament teach about the work and nature of angels? We're so glad that you joined us for our Bible study, for our study today on this wonderful subject. As always, we want to pause and encourage you to locate your Bible, have it handy as we're going to look to the Word of God as our final authority on every subject. Today's message is being brought to you by individual members and congregations of the Lord's Church. The Church of Christ in your local area would love for you to sit down and uh, stop by and visit or come by and study with them. You'll find people there who love God, who are concerned about the Bible, His truth, and who, are in lo who love people's souls as well. If you'd like to have a Bible study, They'd be happy to sit down and study the Word of God with you. And friend, here at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you in your study of God's Word in any way that we can. Won't you check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com? From there, you can find a wide variety of good Bible study material that's all free of charge. We've got video lessons audio lessons, study questions, transcripts, written articles. There is an app for Android and iPhone that you can download free. And we want to help you in any way in your study of the Bible. If you'd like to have a copy of this lesson or any of our over 500 lessons that are available, we'll be happy to make that available to you free of charge. You can download it for your streaming device or on your computer or for your tablet as well. Go to our website, fill out a media request form and just select digital download and you can have it almost instantaneously. If you need a hard copy on DVD or CD, we also provide that available to you free of charge, free of charge as well. We'll even cover the shipping. Just fill out a media request form and select that route as well. And friend, we want you to know today we are so happy that you've joined us to study God's Word. We're going to let the Bible speak, and we're going to let God's Word be the final answer. Our ultimate question is this. Is there any Word from the Lord? Jeremiah 37, 17, and we're going to let God's Word be that final answer. And so let's do this today. Let's have our Bible handy, and let's think about this wonderful subject on angels. Angels in the Bible are God's special servants. And yet in our world today, there seems to be a hysteria and a, a kind of a craze with angels. Angels have been the subject of news magazines, tabloids, TV shows today. There have been a host of books written about guardian angels. You can find them on postcards, shirts, bumper stickers, calendars. If there's one thing that is sure, uh, the religious world has kind of an angel mania. We're crazed with this idea. In fact, Time Magazine conducted a poll a while back among American adults on the subject of angels, and they found these results. 69% of American people confirm their belief in the existence of angels. 46% said they believe in a personal guardian angel. And then 32% claim they have felt an angelic possession, an angelic possession at times in their life. Well, friend, what does the Bible teach about angels? What is an angel? An angel might be defined as an order of supernatural, heavenly beings, spirit beings 
whose business it is to act as God's messengers to men and who are God's agents to help carry out His will. In short, they're just God's special ministers or servants to help in the accomplishing of God's will. Uh, the Hebrew and the Greek words are rather unique and sometimes they can have a dual meaning. The Hebrew word used for an angel uh, at times can mean an angel or a messenger depending on the context. It's used in that way in 1 Kings 19.2 or in Psalm 104 verse 4 where it's ministers or messengers as well. And the Greek word can be used the same way. The Greek word angelos can also mean angel or messenger depending upon the context. Luke chapter 2 uh, they're angels or spirit beings from God, and yet in Revelation 2 and 3, the angel of the church is often recognized as just simply a messenger or some type of spirit. Now, what's interesting about angels is that that word uh, has been used sometimes in the Bible. The word, both in the Hebrew and the Greek, has sometimes been used to refer to as men or God's special men servants. For example, in Haggai 1 verse 13, Haggai is referred to in that sense as an angel or minister of God. Uh, Malachi 3 verse 1, John the Immerser, we know who fulfilled that prophecy, was also used to refer to as a messenger or minister of God. And so sometimes the word in context can be referred to men as well as spirit beings. And of course we want to let the context determine that. Now, what do we know then about angels? What would an angel, let me ask you this, what would an angel look like in the Bible? Here's, here's the, uh, the American vision of an angel. It has wings, it's dressed in white, it has sometimes Goldilocks hair, and it has a halo and it's glowing. Well, that might be a little different than what you might find uh, in the Bible. What would a biblical angel look like? At times, they simply cannot be distinguished from men. Genesis chapter 18, when you've got Lot and his family, Genesis 18 verse 2, and in verse 16, they weren't discerned, they couldn't tell that they weren't men in that context. Now, as we think about angelic appearances, let's consider this also. Some, but not all, do have wings, or at least um, they could fly. The cherubim and seraphim, would, the seraphim and cherubim, which are God's special uh, ministers or servants as well, are definitely described that way. And Daniel 9, verse 21, Revelation 14, 6, might imply their ability to move speedily and possibly uh, fly as well, but not all had wings and flew. We at least know that from the Bible. We know that angels were very magnificent beings. You think about the, 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 the seraphim and the cherubim, God's special servant beings there, uh, described with magnificent appearance in Ezekiel 1, Isaiah 6, just an awe-inspiring image of those beings there. Now, there are times where they were clothed in white and they did shine, but... Not always. That wasn't always the case in the Bible. Now, what do we know about the nature of angels? Here's what's unique. It's concerning their nature, what they're like, uh, we know this. Angels are created beings. How do we know that? Because God created all things. Colossians 1, 16, all things were made by Him, through Him, and for Him. Angels used by God are created beings just like everything else. Isaiah, uh, Psalm 148, verses 2 and verse 5. Again, they're God's special servants. Angels, in some ways, are on a higher plane, if we can use that word, to man. Hebrews 2, verse 9. Man who is made a little lower than the angels. On some plane, there is some distinction made there as well. Angels, unlike men and women today, are spirit beings. Hebrews 1.14, Hebrews 1.7, 1 
Psalm 104, verse 4, uh, who makes his angels ministering spirits. Angels are spiritual beings, not physical beings like us today. And friend, we know this. Angels, they have limited knowledge of the divine plan. Matthew 24, verse 36, of that final day when the Lord is going to come back, the Bible says, not even the angels in heaven know. Only the Father on the timing of that. And so their nature is very unique. We know this about angels. Angels, unlike men, don't marry or procreate. Mark 12, verse 25, Jesus said of angels, they do not marry nor are given in marriage. They don't have that ability uh, to procreate or marry. They're spiritual beings, not like us today. Now, friend, here's something that is unique about angels. In Jude verse number 6 and in 2 Peter chapter 2 verse number 4, we know that certain angels sinned and were cast in chains of darkness reserved for that great judgment. What do I learn about the nature of angels from that? They had a free will of some kind. They were free moral agents in some way. They could choose to obey God or they could choose to disobey God as some did. Now angels by their very nature also worship God. Revelation 4 and 5, you have that great host in the throne room of God and they fall down and worship Him. Hebrews 1 verse 6, they worship God. And so angels are not a, a spirit being that is higher to God, higher than God, or to be worshipped. Rather, they worship God. We know. Now here's something different than what a lot of the world will teach today. Angels are not designed by God to be worshipped. Let me show you a verse on that. Look in Revelation 19. John on the Isle of Patmos has received an awesome revelation from God. It is a revelation of victory. It is a revelation of how God and His Son are ultimately going to be victorious and win the battle. And John is so uh, inspired, mesmerized, awestruck by that revelation that he falls down to worship the angel who gave it. And watch what happens. Revelation 19, verse number 10. And I fell at his feet, the angel, to worship him. Watch this. But he said to me, See that you do not do that. I am your fellow servant of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And so in our world today, people make images and icons and want to elevate and venerate angels. But when John tried that, the angel said, No, no, stand up. Don't do that. Worship God. That's the one who is worthy of our worship. And so we know several things about their nature. What then do we know about what they did in the Bible? Well, one of the functions of an angel, in the, especially as you see in the Old Testament, is that they were sometimes guardians and protectors of what was special or close to God. For example, Genesis 3, verse 34, they guarded the way to the tree of life so that man in his sinful state, sin-stricken state, could not get back to it. They guarded Jesus at times. Psalm 91, verse 11, He would give His angels charge over you. We learn that as well. Uh, at times they protected the prophets. In Daniel chapter 6, the lion's mouths were closed. Who did that? God's special servants, Daniel chapter 6, clearly teaches that. At other times, they uh, transported or delivered messages on behalf of God. Daniel 8 through 10, Zechariah 1, uh, Revelation chapter 1, angels were instrumental in translating revelation to the prophets. We learn that God delivered the Ten Commandments to Moses by the hand of angels. 
Galatians 3, 19, Acts 7, verse 53, those Ten Commandments that were written with the finger of God, they were delivered by the hand of angels, the Bible says. Sometimes uh, in the Bible, part of the function of angels was they were ones who would get to make a wonderful announcement of something. For example, sometimes they announced the birth of someone special. Uh, Judges 13, it is announced to Samson's parents by an angel that their son, who's going to be a Nazarite, is going to be born. Uh, Luke 1, 11, it is announced to John's parents, Zacharias and Elizabeth, that John's coming. And of course, you remember in Matthew 1, verses 20 and 21, the angels announce, you'll have a son. You'll call his name Jesus. He will save his people from their... Wouldn't it be awesome to get to make that announcement? That's what the angels did at times. Uh, sometimes they announced an escape. Matthew 2, verse 13. Jesus was going to be taken to a different area, and he was told that to escape by the angels. But here's a unique function of angels. Sometimes angels were given to offer comfort and strength. Um, Matthew 4.11 You remember Jesus is in the wilderness, tempted there, he's with the wild beast, he goes a great period of time without eating, uh, he's tempted by the devil. Everything that happens to him, you can recall that. And after it was over with, after Christ's temptation in Matthew 4, 11, he was comforted and strengthened by angels. Luke 22, 43, we have in the garden that same idea being brought to effect. But mostly, angels were God's special ministers at the tomb. Matthew 28, verse 2, we have a minister there who's going to announce about Jesus' resurrection, at the ascension, not just His resurrection, but at the ascension. Acts 1 verse 8, there's an angel standing there. Men of Israel, why stand you here, gazing into the heavens? This same Jesus whom you saw ascend will also come again in like manner. Announced the ascension and coming of Jesus at the second coming. God's special servants are going to be there. Matthew 25, 31, uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, He'll come with His heavenly host, as it were. And then, of course, at the judgment, Matthew 13, 49, there'll be that great separation, and God's special servants will be involved in that. Now, let's think about another idea as it relates to their function. Angels were just ones who gave praise to Almighty God. Let me give you an example. Look at Psalm 103, verse 21. Sometimes angels simply praise God as man does. Psalm 103, look in verse number 21. Here's what the Bible records on this idea. The Scripture says, Bless the Lord, all you His host, you ministers, and again, the idea here for ministers would be servants, maybe representative angels, who do His pleasure. So all the host of God is to worship Him. Revelation 4 and 5, we know that includes angels because they fell down at the throne of God and did God's will there. And then one of the more unique uh, things we see about angels is in Luke 16, 22. Sometimes their job was to transport the righteous. Lazarus, you remember, beautiful picture. Lazarus was carried by angels to Abraham's bosom. All right, let's address some common myths, maybe about angels that we often hear. Um, all angels have wings. We've already addressed this idea. Daniel 9, 21, Revelation 14, 6 may imply that angels could move speedily and possibly fly. But again, that could be taken very figurative. And we've already seen multiple examples where you couldn't discern an angel from a man. So all angels, that's a myth. All angels do not have wings. In fact, the majority of them in the Bible do not have wings. Second myth about angels, we're all going to become an angel. Something they might say of somebody, he's an angel. Well, we understand that they're saying they're a kind spirit. But friend, the Bible does not teach 
we're going to become angels. That's not taught at all in the Bible. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 51 says there will be a definite change, but that change will be from immortality to mor from mortality to immortality, from corruptible to incorruptible. It doesn't say that we're going to become angels. Um, another common myth. Angels can talk to us today. Really? Where's that taught at in the Bible? Here's how God talks to us today. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, listen to it now, has in these last days spoken to us by His Son. God gave us the Bible, His final revealed will. And here's what I know. Listen carefully. Anybody who says they're an angel and has a different message from God, don't believe it. How do we know that? Galatians 1, verses 6 through 9. Paul said, I marvel, I'm amazed that you're turning away so soon from him who called you to the gospel of Christ to another gospel, which is not another, but they want to pervert the gospel of Christ. And then Paul says this, even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what you've preached, let him be accursed. As I've said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel, let them be anathema, cut off, from God. And so the message of the Bible, regardless of what somebody comes, the message of the Bible is what really, really matters. Another myth. We all have a special guardian angel today. Again, we ask, where is that taught at in the Bible? Hebrews 1 verse 14 says, Are they not all ministering spirits sent to minister for sent to minister to those who will inherit salvation? Speaking about God's scheme of redemption and prophetic plan, did not angels work to get salvation to man? Absolutely. Friends, you've got to squeeze something into that verse to say we all have guardian angels. Uh, Matthew 18, 10, uh, speaking of children and their angel, if there's anything that might possibly be taught, it would be about children, but even again then we have to be very careful in interpreting that passage. And then another idea, common myth, where we might possibly entertain angels today. Hebrews 13, 2, it is said, Some have entertained angels unaware. Well, who in context are we talking about? Well, I know of a couple that did that in the Bible, right? Abraham and Sarah unwittingly, unaware, attained angels. And the writers say, here's this whole point. Be hospitable, be helpful, be kind. Why? Because somebody at one point entertained angels and they didn't even know it. Is he saying that's going to happen? That's not the idea. The main point is be hospitable. Let us then think about some ideas that will help Christians today as we think about the subject of angels. Here are some facts to consider about angels. Ultimately, angels will be judged by the saints. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 6, do you not know that we will judge the angels? What's he talking about? If we can live, if free moral agents like man who have sinned can obey the gospel, live right, have an exemplary life, and be found favorable in God's sight, that stands as a testament that anybody can do that. The Sadducees and many people today didn't believe angels ever existed. Acts 23 verse 8, Mark chapter 12, uh, they didn't even believe in angels. We believe they existed and that they, they did, did happen and that they're servants of God, but not that they're running around active today. We think about the idea of angels and we know this. Certain angels, sadly, are going to be lost eternally because they did not obey God. Look at 2 Peter chapter 2. I want you to see what is said about angels who disobeyed God in 2 Peter chapter 2. Look at verse number 4. The Bible says this, For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, and, but cast them down to hell, Tartarus, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment, he goes on to say he's not going to spare us either. The point being this, certain angels who sinned, they're going to have to face judgment, and they will be lost for disobeying God and not doing what He said. But friend, here's the main point. A study of angels is a great subject. It's a wonderful idea to see what they did for God and how they gave themselves fully to God in the Bible. But here's what we want to drive home today. Please don't miss this message. This book, 
the Bible and its message is more valid and I need to give more attention to it than any hysteria or ideas people may try to promote about angels. Are there good things to study about angels? They did great things. Are they powerful beings? Yes. Where's God's power to save today? Right here. Listen again to Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1 teaches us where we need to focus our attention for salvation is not on what an angel may or may not have said but on what the Word of God actually says. Galatians chapter 1. Notice verses 6 through 9. Paul says, I marvel, I'm amazed that you are turning away so soon from Him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what we've preached to you, let him be accursed. As we've said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you've received, let him be accursed. What really matters today? Study of angels is a really great and interesting study. But you know what's more important than that? What does this book say I need to do to get right with God? That's what's really going to matter. I may not have every idea and facet and scenario figured out about angels, but you know what? I can know I'm saved based off what the Bible teaches. 1 John 5 verse 13. And so we ask you today, friend, are you a child of God? Have you obeyed the gospel of Christ? Do you believe He's the Savior? John 14, 6. Would you turn from sin in repentance, Acts 3 verse 19. Why not make that great confession, I believe Christ is the Son of God, Acts 8 verse 36 through 39. And then, to have every sin washed away, would you be saved, Acts 2 verse 38, repent and be baptized for the remission of your sins. Join us next time as we study the Word of God together. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, streaming, free media, and internet. Our motto is truly to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls not your wallet. This is the Gospel of Christ. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study material as well as video and audio from our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form. You can also reach us by emailing mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call us at 844-6-GOSPEL or write to us at the address on your screen. You can also get our Gospel of Christ app on your handheld devices for those on the go.